So Sabarabhata Chaya for many days, seven days, he started to wrangle Logomachi and so much now Pandita, so much knowledge about Vedanta Sutra, explaining it in the light of the Shantaka Bhasya or Shankaracharya. Because now most people, for most people, Vedanta means the Vedanta of Shankar, his interpretation. Completely impersonal. Mahaprabhu for seven days sat in great silence, without asking any question, making any comments, nothing, nothing. After seven days, the Bhattacharya said, Oh, you have been sitting here like a Mahamuni, like if you have taken a vow of silence. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not asking any question. It seems to me that you're not understanding anything. Are you a fool? And Mahaprabhu said, Oh, the verses of Vedanta are very, very clear. I can understand them very clear. They're like the sun, but your explanation is like the clouds covering the sun. And therefore, the cloud in the meaning, I can't understand anything, anything you're talking about. And Bhattacharya said, what? But my explanation is supposed to enlighten the subject matter. What are you talking about? Now, can you say something? And my brother said, oh, with your permission, I may try to say something. At that time, he said, the Supreme Lord is full of qualities. He has name, form, innumerable qualities. But you have called him Nirakar, without any form, that he has no qualities, nil Shakti. Also, he's full of so many beautiful qualities. You turn him into a piece of stone. Now, by your words, you cut in his arms, cut in his legs, making him like a, no, a, a emptiness. This is not the meaning of Vedanta, then, or you speak something. At that time, Mahaprabhu very expertly cut all his, all his arguments, and he quoted his famous verse. At Maramas Chamunayu, Nirganti Apiuruklame, Kurvanti Haitu Kimbaktin, Itam Buta Kuno Hari. Then Bhattacharya said, oh, what is that? Well, this is explaining that even the liberated souls, those who have no more interest in matter, who don't find any more their happiness in anything material, still, when they hear the quality of the Lord, although they are liberated, they are attracted. This is proving that the Lord is beyond matter. Because Shankar's philosophy is that the Lord actually is a product of Maya. Mayavad is a very pernicious philosophy. They say that the only reality is Brahman. This is the only reality. Everything else is an illusion. That Brahman is covered by Maya. A part of Maya covers Brahman. The part of Maya, which is in the mode of goodness covering Brahman, gives the idea of the form of God and religion and bhakti. Actually, it's just Maya. They are very kind with the Lord. They say, oh, the Lord is a sum, the sum and bottom of ignorance. In other words, Maya in its highest form, the form of goodness, is creating the idea of Ishvara. There is a Supreme Lord and we are supposed to worship Him. This is only Maya in the mode of goodness. Oh, thank you, Maya Badis. Oh, you are very kind to our Lord. You have no say in the goodness. And they say that the whole material world is a product of Maya covering Brahman, but Maya in the mode of ignorance. And the living entities, us, oh, we are the mode of no, Maya in the mode of passion covering Brahman. Actually, this is all illusion. Only Brahman exists. But Mahaprabhu said this verse is proving that the Lord is beyond the gunas because those who have become nirgun, those who have become liberated, no, Atvarama, those who find happiness in the self, they find attraction when they hear about the qualities of the Lord. This is proving definitely is not what you're saying, is not a product of ignorance in the mode of goodness, my element of goodness, is beyond the modes. So he cut his arguments. Then he asked, Oh, you please speak about this verse. No. And Bhattacharya, no, Salamu Bhattacharya gave six different explanations of that verse. No. Nine different explanations of the verse. Mahaprabhu said, oh, very beautiful. Now shall I speak something? Oh, you please tell. Mahaprabhu, without touching any of his nine explanations, gave another 18. 1864, who says more? 18. 18. Okay. 18. 18 different explanations without touching any of the points that the Bhattacharya made. Then the Bhattacharya could understand, oh, only Bhagavan himself can explain like this. And he bowed down to his feet 
At that time, Mahaprabhu mercifully showed him his sad boots form. Now his six arm form, two arms, Krishna with a flute, two arms in his ears with Namda and Kamandalu, and two arms, Ram with bow and arrow. At that time, the, Ma the Bhattacharya was completely astonished and he fainted. Now the next morning, Mahaprabhu came with Mahaprasad and he knocked on the door before the Bhattacharya had done any ritual, oblation, rituals or anything. And he knocked on the door and he said, Oh, Bhattacharya, I have brought Mahaprasad from you. And then without doing any you know, ritualistic activity of purification, but he accepted the prasad. And Mahaprabhu said, oh, today I have conquered the whole world because Bhattacharya has accepted the Mahaprasad of the Lord. And he quoted those two verses that sometimes we quote before prasadam. The prasadam of the Lord should be accepted as soon as it is received without any consideration of time and place, whether it is stale or old, there is no rules and regulation. And Bhattacharya became a very great Vaishnava, he became actually the head of the Puri community and himself was converting so many others. After liberation of Sarvam Bhattacharya, Buddha, and then he decided before Rath Jatra to go in South India to such a brother. What became of my Bishwaru brother? He took only one a boy, Kala Krishna Das, and he went south. There are so many history in the way, but in the end, he went to Godauri and river and took bath. And then he sat on the bank of a river. In the meantime morning, the governor of that uh, Maharaj Prataparudra oh, came in Palenquin and drum were beaten and hundreds of Brahmins when reciting Veda Mantra. Then Mahaprabhu thought it may be Rayaramana. Sarvam Bhattacharya has told me if you are going to Sarv, you must meet his high class of Rasi. So when he was coming, then he took bath and after he saw a very interesting a fulgent sannyasi is sitting here and he is doing dhyan and he became very wondered and then with a simple one dhoti after taking bath and alone he came there he was in med meditation. Then he went for some minutes. In the meantime, Mahaprabhu said, Are you Ramananda? Oh, Ramananda. Oh, I am saying Sudra Ram, Ra Ramananda. Sudra means, you know, low class person, Ra Ramananda. Oh, see. Sarvam Bhattacharya was very merciful to me that he sent to you and automatically without any effort I met you. Then <coughs> Raraman told, if you have come by the uh, by Sarvam Bhattacharya he has sent. Very good. I want that you should stay here for ten days at least and we will do Hari Katha here. I will hear Hari Katha. Then Mahaprabhu told that come in evening alone in sadharana ways, ordinary dress. Then he went back to his Raj palace and in the evening only Dhoti one 
in very simple dress, he came to Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu was waiting eagerly for him. And then some dialogue began with him. Uh, Shrauti Maharaj will explain something. Shrauti eh? Maharaj. First. First Maharaj. Ask him what you want. Ask him what you want. Can you not? Can you not? Agyana Timirandasya, Agyanam Jana Shalakaya, Chakshurum Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Gurave Gaura Chandraya, Radhikaya Tadalaya, Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya, Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha, Vanchakalpata Rupyascha, Kripa Sindhubya Evacha, Patitanam Pavanibyo, Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha. First of all, my limited obeisance is to Srila Gurudev, Vishnu Pada Stotra Satishman Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and all Sanyasi Gan, and all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, Srila Gurudev is telling about Sriman Mahaprabhu's uh, trip to South India and how he met Sri Raya Ramananda. So, Sri Raya Ramananda is a very special figure in Sri Chaitanya Lila. He is an uh, incarnation of Vishakha Devi in Sri Chaitanya Lila. Also, he is one of uh, Nitya Parikars and one of uh, and, uh, Swat Parishadas, one of the three and a half most confidential associates of Mahaprabhu. Him and uh, Swarupa Damodara were the two personalities who were allowed to be with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Gambhira. And uh, Raya Ramananda, who is Vishaka Devi, and Swarupa Damodara, who is Lalita Devi, were those persons who were helping Mahaprabhu uh, in relishing his bhavs, in relishing his radha bhav, the mood of Srimati Radhika. So, um, previous Acharyas and Srila Gurudev, he gave us the conception about who Raya Ramananda is, and he gave us the message about uh, Raya Ramananda as uh, Vishaka Devi, as being Shiksha Guru to Mahaprabhu, instructing him in what Radha Bhav really is. Because Vishaka Devi is a very uh, confidential associate of Srimati Radhika. So, Raya Ramananda's function in Chaitanya Lila is. Uh, uh, to uh, teach Mahaprabhu of Radhabhav. So Mahaprabhu uh, could relish Radhabhav even uh, deeply, more deeply. So uh, Mahaprabhu is the ocean of jewels, um, uh, incomparable jewels. He's the ocean of uh, Radhabhav and very, very sacred uh, moods of Radhabhav. So Raya Ramananda Sambhat is a very uh, sacred conversation, which is the crown jewel of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Gurudev said so many times again and again. Um, there is no comparison to this dialogue. So, uh, uh, first question which uh, Mahaprabhu asked of Raya Ramananda. Uh, uh -huh. So Raya Ramananda is the ocean of jewels. Uh, uh, Mahaprabhu is the ocean of jewels and Raya Ramananda is the cloud which uh, uh, normally we know the clouds, they come out of ocean as evaporation of water from the ocean. So in that same way, Raya Ramananda is that um, uh, cloud which is made from the jewels of that ocean, that transcendental uh, water which is in the ocean. So Mahaprabhu is the ocean of Prem and uh, Raya Ramananda is a concentrated cloud which pours that same water, nectarian water, into that ocean. So this is the meaning of the role of Raya Ramananda in Sri Chaitanya Lila. The water comes in ocean, yes. so they can pulse and then he is called Ratnakar. Ratnakar. Why tell them? Uh, it's called Ratnakar because mm, this is the concentrated 
concentrated uh, uh, form of uh, what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has in his heart. And uh, Rai Ramananda is the uh, em uh, embodiment of what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has in his heart. And he gives it back to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on his request. So this is the meaning of Ratnakar. And after that, uh, uh, Mahaprabhu uh, asked Rai Ramananda, you please tell me about what is the goal, what is sadhya? Please explain the conception of sadhya. We know that there is uh, sadhana and sadhya. The goal, which is Krishna Prem, and the sadhana, the uh, way to achieve that Prem. So, uh, we should know very well what is real sadhya. So, um, Rai Ramananda very humbly uh, paid obeisance to Mahaprabhu and said, Oh my Lord, actually, you are speaking through me. I'm like an insignificant puppet who just moving his lips, uh, is telling what is within depth of your heart. So, uh, Rai Ramananda uh, first said that the uh, sadhya sar, or the essence of all uh, sadhya, of all uh, um, goal, supreme goal, he said first it's uh, uh, varnashrama dharma, or uh, the performing of the prescribed uh, duties within uh, the system of four varnas and four ashramas. We know that there are four Varnas, the four categories of social life, and four ashramas, the four categories of uh, spiritual life. Uh, so it corresponds to uh, Brahmana Vaishya Kshatriya Shudra, uh, Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya Shudra, and Brahmachari Grihastha Vanaprastha Sanyasi. And uh, Rayamananda quoted one verse from Vishnu Puran, which is said, uh, in which it is said that when you perform uh, the, your duties according to Varnashrama Dharma, um, then uh, you are on human platform, and then the Supreme Personality of Godhead is pleased. So, Srila uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada in his commentary on uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita in this place is saying that uh, definitely uh, when uh, we perform uh, our duties according to Varnashrama Dharma, we are above animal platform. While we are not performing our duties according to Varnashrama Dharma, we are right on the animal platform. That's why we can see in this society, uh, human society today, uh, there is practically no Varnashram, only some remains in India. That's why people, uh, as Swami Maharaj came to the West, Prabhupada came to the West, he said that they like dogs and hogs. Means they are not according, uh, living even according to the human level, what to speak of spiritual development. Um, that is why it's very essential uh, to observe Varnashrama, certainly, because uh, without uh, proper Varnashrama and uh, uh, strict advance of rules and regulations of uh, spiritual and uh, the social um, structure of society, there's no question of spiritual life. But uh, this is very external. Um, why is it external? Mahaprabhu said, Eho Bahyam. Why did Mahaprabhu say that? Because within the system of Varnashrama, there is no conception of the soul. No conception of the soul and no conception of God also, actually. Because uh, Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he uh, introduced Daivi Varnashrama. And all our acharyas always uh, uh, introducing Daivi Varnashrama. Why? Daivi, because it's uh, godly, it's uh, uh, Krishna oriented. But uh, uh, still, Mahaprabhu wanted to hear something more. So that is why uh, Rai Ramananda said, um, this is external, speak more. Atma uh, Karmarpana Sarva Sadhyasar. Karmarpana means uh, giving the fruits of your work to Lord Krishna, to Vishnu. This is uh, the proper way it should be. So uh, the platform of Varnashram is already set. And within the Varnashrama, there is the process of karma yoga, the um, uh, non-attachment to the fruits of your work. The fruits of your work should be always dedicated to the Supreme Lord. That is why Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna is pleased. So Mahaprabhu, uh, he wanted to hear some quotation about that. Rai Ramananda said, 
yat karashi adashna si yat jagashi dadasi yat yat tapasi sikanti ya tat kurushva mat arpanam this is from bhagavad gita 927 in which krishna said yat karashi whatever you do yat ashnasi whatever you eat yat uh, yat uh, juhashi whatever sacrifice you perform uh, juhashi dadasi yat whatever charity you give uh, yat tapasi sikanti ya all son of kunti whatever tapasi whatever austerity you perform um, uh, madarpanam give it as an offering to me and this is completely correct because nothing in this world uh, belongs to us but uh, if we just do adma karmarpanam the dedication of the fruits of your work towards the supreme then it will be also external why because this is just aropsida bhakti this is just the external level of bhakti which is a rope means uh, the performer of the action is really thinking that he is the performer of the action and the uh, uh, out of uh, his desire whether he has desire or doesn't have any desire but anyway if he gives 10 or 20 percent of whatever he has done to the temple say he has a beautiful garden he has some fruits in that garden and he uh, gives uh, fruits which grow in his garden to the local temple that's the way it is very often in india so many pious people they do but this is only the external uh, surface of bhakti, which is called Aropsida bhakti. So actually we are not performers of any action. And uh, the process of Sharanagati is first of all, you dedicate yourself to the Supreme. You first of all say, oh Krishna, I am yours. And uh, whatever I do is automatically yours. Then it's the proper um, performance of Sharanagati, which is just doorway to bhakti. That's why uh, Mahaprabhu says, Eho bahyam kahar. This is external and please proceed more. That is why, um, uh, furthermore, uh, Rara Mananda started speaking about uh, the uh, renunciation from the fruits of one's work. But uh, Vaishnavas will speak more, so I'm ending my speech. Dasya Gyanam Jana Sharakaya Chaksur Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Pancha Kalpatar Vyascha Kipas Hindu Vyavacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishna Vyo Namo Namaha First of all, I'd like to offer my unlimited Dandavat pronouns. And to the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Om Nityalila Prashna Vishnu Pach, Shmachila Golgovinda Goswami Maharaj, Nityalila Prashna Vishnu Pach, Shmachila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, Shila Prabhupada, and my Shiksha and Sanyas Guru, Om Vishnu Pach, Paramahamsa, Parivraja Kacharya Stotara Satosi Srimad, Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and all Vaishnava and Vaishnavis and guests who are all here today. Please, my dandavat pronouns. So, Sadhu Maharaj was introducing the matter of uh, Roro Yamananda Sambhad, speaking about how Varnashram Dharma is the fundamental platform, but not actually the goal. But on the basis of this platform, uh, spiritual life can take place and develop very nicely, but one should not be attached to uh, fructive activities, result of work on that Banashan Dharma. So then, uh, Yat Karoshi Yadash Dosi means uh, he's offering the result of his uh, activities, his work, but this is not enough because it's a pretext to not to surrender to the Lord because the Lord wants us to surrender completely ourselves. The soul is very minute, infinitesimal. If we don't give it completely, then what will be left? Nothing. So the Lord wants, wants that everyone should surrender totally. But at that platform of the conversation, the surrender is not yet to be achieved because the soul is not prepared to uh, 
surrender himself. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, this is external, can you go deeper? So, Roy Ramananda, Ramananda says, Sarvadaman Parityaja, Mame Kam Sharanam Bhaja, Aham Tuam Sarvapa Pebyo Moksai Siami Masuchaha. Oh, you should surrender unto me, but if you think there will be any problems by this, then be assured I will protect you from any reactions. This dharma of surrendering all phases of duties, giving up, is not the dharma of the eternal soul, it is the dharma of the body. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks there of the dharma of the body. Like, oh, I have I promised my wife that I will protect her and maintain her and I will also take care of my children, I will take care of my parents serving them. But in the meanwhile, I realized that, oh, I am a devotee and I should serve the Lord. So how can I give up my promise to them? This is not possible. Otherwise I will anchor, anchor one reactions and I will suffer the reactions. So what to do? So in order to help the person to progress on that path of self-realization, Chaitanya uh, Lord Krishna says, this is his own words and the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, Sarvan Dharma Paitasha. You you don't have to worry, Masuchaha, about the reactions. I will take care of them. I will burn all the karmas that you may encounter by giving up your activities. But this uh, giving up activities is not the same surrender that the great devotees of the Lord they are performing. You know, there's a story one time, Doryodhan, he was very worried because he saw that Bhishma Dev was not going to fight and kill the Pandavas. So he approached him and he asked, I am very worried, I may be killed tomorrow or very, very soon. Because I see that you don't want to kill the Pandavas. You have a lot of affection for them. So you should give assurance to me that I will not be killed. So Bhishma Dev, he said, okay, tonight at midnight, you come with Balumati, your wife, and I will give her benedictions that you will not die. So Bhagavati. So Duryodhan became very relieved and prepared to go. But that night, a very big storm break out and he couldn't figure out how to go to the tent of Bhishma Dev. So he decided that I will do tomorrow, we will go tomorrow. At the same time, Lord Krishna, he called Draupadi, oh my daughter, come, we have, I want to take you somewhere. So he arranged a very nice chariot and protection from the storm and he brought her to Bhishma Dev's tent. So arriving there, he told her, you put your veil, protect your face, and you pay your Dandavat Pranam to Bhishma Dev. So then when Bhishma Dev heard, he awoke, and he realized that somebody is there. So immediately he said, oh, I am very happy that you came to see me. And I want to give you a very, very nice benediction. I want you that you be, never will become a widow. That means your husband will never die. So Draupadi, very surprised, she became very happy. And she looked at Bhishma Dev and she lifted her veil. And Bhishma Dev said, oh, that's you. How did you come here? Who has brought you here? Oh, I understand. This chitter, Krishna, where is he? Oh, he's waiting for me outside. Oh, I want to see him. So he went outside and he paid his Dandavat Pranam to Krishna. And he said, my Lord, nobody can go against your will. And if you want to protect the Pandavas, then nobody can harm them. Why? Because they have surrendered completely, fully, to the Lord Spirit of the Lord. So they don't have any worried about anything in life. And they'll be protected. This is Lord Krishna's uh, duty now to make sure that everybody who surrendered to him is protected and maintained fully and also happy. 
So it's the case of Pandavas and the case of even Dwarka, Mahishis, even more what to speak of the Gopis and others inhabitants of the uh, Dwarka of Vrindavan. Uh, uh, they are fully surrounded, so much so that they don't even mind about whether Krishna uh, is protecting them or not. Actually, Radharani, she's protecting Krishna from being unhappy. She's always worried for him. Her surrender is not partial, artificial, or conditional. She has fully surrendered so much that Krishna himself has surrendered to her lotus feet. Is it wrong? Go on. So, in this way, Krishna shows, yes, they are surrendered to me fully, so I bend my head at the lotus feet of gopis and especially Radharani and I want the confirmation that I am the surrendered soul by the red light from her feet on my leg, on my head, this is confirmed. In this way, we can understand that the surrender of the great souls is different than Sarvadharma Parityaja. And our Guru Parampara wants us to surrender in this way, same way as they did. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, this is external, because Krishna didn't say in this verse that I will give you pure bhakti or I give you pure love of God. He said, I will just protect you from the reactions of your sins. So he said, go on. Then Ramananda Roy said, Brahmabhutta Pasanatma Nasuchati Nakyam Shati Sarmat Sarveshu Bhuteshu Nabhaktim Lavate Param. He said, oh, give up anything about this world. No reaction, even you don't have to do anything with this world. And just remain peaceful and calm and meditate on Brahma, Nir Vishesh Brahma. Huh? Then you become very happy, uh, each other is happy, we we'll have no lamentation whatsoever about any lacking in life and you will not even look for anything for your sense gratification. You will see everybody equally and you will have a chance to do para bhakti, pure bhakti devotional service to the Lord. There is two kinds of Brahma Gyanis. One is the Brahma Gyani who lives in Kashi. They are very, very insolent and offensive to the law. They think Krishna is not Supreme Personality of God. And they don't worship Him. They only think, I want to merge in Brahma. And they think Brahma is even superior to Lord Krishna. So they offense Brahma, uh, Krishna, offense to Srimad Bhagavatam, to anything which is related to the absolute uh, personal consideration of Godhead. So those, they are not, they are Maya bodies. They're very, they think they will become liberated, but actually it is just imaginary. Sayuja Mukti is not real, it's false. And instead they will go to hell without fear. But the other kind of Brahma Gyanis, they live in Vrindavan and they're not offensive. They like to chant Maha Mantra, they have appreciation for Srimad Bhagavatam, and they live in the Dham. They think by chanting Maha Mantra, it will be easier to achieve liberation. It's a misconception, but it is not offensive. So, by the mercy of Dham, and by Supriti sometimes also, somehow, if they meet a spiritual master, then all their misconception will be eradicated, and they will hear what is the proper understanding of what is the process of self-realization and they will surrender their life and all the misconceptions will be removed. And only that mercy which will take form as a uh, sprout of bhakti will remain in their life. Will they many times give the example. Finish. Today we are giving rest to Harikatha and tomorrow again Raramanan Sambhad we will begin. I will also speak about this. Hare Krishna.
Today, Srila Gurudev mercifully giving initiation for 102 devotees. We have announced some names. Whoever don't know their names, they can contact to Sipad Vishnu Maharaj. Vishnu Maharaj stand up. This copy will be Vishnu Maharaj who, does, who don't know their spiritual name. They can contact with Vishnu Maharaj after class. And as before we announced that so many devotees want to meet with Gurudev and they have some questions, some, some donations, so tomorrow Gurudev will come here after 10 a.m. So we have not met with Gurudev yet. They can come and do their pranam, ask their question and ask their offerings. And day after tomorrow, we will have fire sacrifice, headed by Sripad Gaur Maharaj, 10 a.m. Where at night they put market, in that market place will be fire sacrifice. So day after tomorrow, 10 a.m. fire sacrifice. And tomorrow, Darshan of Gurudev here, 10 a.m. Hare Krishna. Krishna 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 Krishna